Jesus. Glory be to God. Amen. King of glory, fill. Come fill this place. And I just lift up your hands to heaven just for a moment and just worship the King of kings. Just tell him how beautiful he is to you. Tell him how beautiful he is to you. Just acknowledge his goodness in your life. Acknowledge his presence. Acknowledge his love for you. The Bible says, if not for God's everlasting love, would have been consumed. Acknowledge his love. Acknowledge his mercy. Just do that for a moment. Just for a few minutes. Just thank him. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we acknowledge you. We thank you for your awesomeness. Lord, we thank you for you are great and greatly to be praised. Lord, we thank you for tonight, for your people have gathered once again in your presence, Lord. Because they know in your presence there is relief. In your presence there is freedom. In your presence there is peace and joy. In your presence there is safety and refuge. In your presence all our needs are met. So God, we've come to you, we've come to your presence because we know what it means to be in your presence and in your house. Lord, we thank you, Lord, we bless your name. We, we magnify you for the things you are doing all, all, all over the globe. Lord, speak to us tonight. Let there be an increase in our faith towards your word and in your word. And let it be a transformation in our lives. In Jesus' name, and every believer says, Amen. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And you may be seated. I want to thank you all again for being here tonight. It's such, <laughs> it's such a time to be alive. Amen. Amen. It's such, if I, I was told I would see a time like this, I probably would think uh, that prophet must be speaking some nonsense. But to be alive at this time where believers can actually express their faith in God, where people like you can stand up and say, I hold God's word to higher esteem than I hold any other word in this world. Amen? Because God's word is the final authority. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Acts 2, 42. Lord, we give you praise. Acts 2, 42. We are dealing today with the three components of faith. And they continued... And they continued steadfastly. And they, somebody say they. So not just one person hiding, but they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread, which should present the Holy Communion and in prayers and they continue and that's what we are doing here every time we come together we are continuing steadfastly in the doctrine that have been laid before us in the scripture and in fellowship with one another and in, in partaking and breaking of bread and also in a time of prayer and I believe that as we continue in this word of God and in fellowshipping and in breaking of bread and in prayer, we would always come out on top. Amen? Say with me, I'm coming out on top. Come on, say it like you believe it. Say it one more time. So now you must understand that we live in a time if you are a believer, that's good. If you are not, it's important to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. But we live in a time for believers where you know everything can fail you. The medical science can fail. It's not working. 
So the only thing that's going to work for you today is your faith and your confidence in God's word. Amen? It's your confidence in the word of God. Your faith and your confidence in the word of God. Because that is the only thing that can see you through throughout this season where everybody is running heter sketcher and hiding in their closets. But God has not called us to hide. He has called us to shine as the light of the word. Amen. Amen. We are to shine. We are to express the very, to be the expression of the very image of God, the very the, the very embodiment of God's power reside in you as a child of God. You know, no wonder, no wonder the, the Bible tells us that the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. And God said, it takes no pleasure in those that turn back. Say the just, those who believe in God, those who are righteous, those who are born again, they live by faith. And what is faith? Of course, we know that faith is a confidence assurance or confidence in God's word. I want to be dealing today with the three components of faith so we understand how these things really work. But before that, let's go to Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So now, so then, let's, say, let's go back, maybe start from verse 10. Let's see how that goes. Verse 10. For with the hurt, all right, maybe we should go further back, go to verse 8. But what saith thee, the word of faith, the word is nigh thee, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart. You know, this is really the time where people need to ask themselves, am I really a believer? Have you asked yourself that question already? Have you asked yourself that? Maybe not yet. You know, there are stages in my life where I have come to a place that I ask myself certain questions because the greatest deception you can have in life is when you deceive yourself. If somebody else deceives you, I mean, but when you start deceiving yourself, you are in big trouble. You cannot deceive yourself. You got to know where you are. If you really believe God, or if this is just a show. But I thank God because most of us here today and maybe all of us watching, we believe God. Amen? If you believe God, let me hear another good amen. amen. And it says here that thou shalt, if thou would confess with your mouth. So there is a confession that has to be done with your mouth and shall believe in thine heart believe in thy heart shall believe in thy heart you know many times we say these things and and preachers preach it and now we come to a time like this and nobody is believing in their heart. It was all head knowledge. See, I believe in my heart that I am born again. I believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins. I believe in my heart that he paid for my healing. I believe in my heart that he paid for my prosperity. 
I believe in my heart that no devil can mess with me. I believe in my heart that God is true. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. It's my desire to raise a people and a church that really believe God. Not to just talk about it when everything is looking okay. And then when things are not looking that okay, everybody's running backward. And I asked myself, where, like Jesus asked, where is your faith? And he said, will I found faith on this earth when the Son of Man returns? Say, I believe. I believe in my heart. So belief is a function of the heart. When we talk about the heart in the New Testament also refers, is a connection with your mind. The heart is not just what pumps the blood, but because your spirit, your mind. So you believe in your heart. So it says here, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then thou shalt be saved. You've got to believe these things. You've got to believe. The salvation is not referring only to salvation to go to heaven. It's the complete package for what the atonement of Jesus Christ afforded us. That means that you are saved from hell. You are saved from disease. You are saved from lack and poverty. If you believe, say, I believe. I made a statement the other day. I said, don't allow the experience of others cloud your belief in God. Don't even allow your own experience cloud your belief in the word of God. Don't say to yourself, I prayed last week and nothing happened. I'm going to stop believing. No, you can't operate like that. No, you can't work like that. The Bible says, they that believe until the end, revelation, shall be saved. Now, this salvation is not merely referring to, to going to heaven, but really means all total package of salvation. Saved from onslaught of the enemy, saved from disease, saved from lack, saved from whatever the enemy throws your way. John 10, 10, the thief commit not but to steal, three agendas still kill and destroy. And Jesus said, but I have come that you may have life and have life more abundantly. So verse 10 says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So you believe with your heart and you confess with your mouth. So, Paul said in 1 Corinthians, I believe, he said, we believe, therefore we say. So, what you say is an indication of what you really believe in your heart. Are you listening to me? What you say, of course, in your private word, when nobody's watching, when the pastor is not there, when your fellow brothers and sisters are not with you, what you say at those times is really what you believe in your heart. What are you saying? Do you really believe that God has given you the grace to walk in divine health? Or do you just think it's one of those things in the Bible? I love what Esther said in the book of Esther. Esther said, I am taking upon myself to believe that God has called me to be a deliverer. 
I'm going to go to the king against the king's order. And he said, if I die, if I perish, I perish. Did Esther perish? She did not perish. Because whenever a man or a woman take a stand for God, God always backs them up. Bible says, if you suffer for wrongdoing, it's not too good, but suffering for believing God's word is okay. When you are ostracized, you can't believe the kind of messages I receive in the last couple of weeks. But if you ostracize from those that you thought you were together because of your stance in the word of God, don't you back up, Amen. Because by the end of the day, you will know those that really believed or those that just have this as a talking point. Say, I believe. Say, I believe. God is on my side. In the name of Jesus. Say, I believe. I have immunity. You know, remember this. You are a citizen of heaven. Now, do you really believe that? Or is it just what you read in the Bible? You know, truthfully, it bothers because people read the Bible, they are Bible teachers, they just know it and you don't see it in your life. And when things happen like this, they say, oh, they just know it, they can quote it. The Bible says you are a citizen of heaven. You don't belong for this world. But the things that affect this world, because you are, you belong to the embassy of God, you have immunity. Yes. Yes. That what happens around the world, if you really believe you are a citizen of heaven, that means heaven protects you. Heaven protects you. You know, I think about situation like this. If you are in a foreign country and, and, you, and maybe you, of course you're an American and you committed a crime maybe in Botswana I mean of you know where Botswana is okay, let me go to different countries I'm not you know where Botswana is maybe in uh, Peru I'm, I'm not you know where Peru is you know, if, okay, in Portugal I'm not you know where Portugal is you said I don't know Portugal, alright in Puerto Rico, no, Portugal is part of America in Mexico I'm not you know where Mexico is Okay, so you commit a crime in Mexico and they are chasing after you. And you run into the American embassy. That's it. They can't touch you. As long as you are in the, once you step in, you are in the soil of America. As long as you stay in there, no police officer from that country can touch you. So we as Christians must understand the immunity that you have as a child of God when you understand and when you know these things. Not just a head knowledge, but a revelation knowledge that you are a citizen of heaven. Say amen. amen. Verse 11. For the scripture says that whosoever Believeth on him shall not be shall not be what? Shall not be ashamed. God would never let you down. He would never think about the three Hebrew children. They believed God. Did God let them down? God would never let you down. If you believe, that's what we're going to talk about, the three components of faith, so you know where you are, so you can really believe rightly. Amen? Amen. So it's not just what you say with your mouth, it's actually all the three dynamics or elements or the components of faith. Verse 12. For there's no difference between the Jews and the Greek, the Greek, the same Lord over all and of all is rich unto them that call upon him. The next verse. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? How many people? Who? 
so ever. Verse 14. How then shall they call upon whom they've not believed? And how shall they believe in him they've not heard? And how can they hear without a preacher? That's why we are preaching today. Amen? But you got to hear this thing so you can believe it. Verse 15. And how shall they preach and said they be sent? As it's written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad, glad tidings of good things. 16. But they have not obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Who had believed our report? So I am a believer. Then verse 17 that says, So then, so all of that is to say this. All we've read from verse 8 is to say, So then, faith cometh by what? Now that word hearing in the Greek word actually means hearing and understanding. So faith comes by hearing and understanding and hearing the word of God. So faith comes by that way. When you hear and you understand God's word. Amen? So let's deal now with the three components of faith. Number one. Say with me, I want to get this in your heart. Say faith is nonsense. Say faith does not make sense. But faith is not blind. Okay. So there is, and I will explain, and I will tell you what that means. That means there is no blind faith. We just read faith comes by hearing. So number one component of faith is knowledge. Your faith is limited to knowledge. You cannot have faith beyond your knowledge of your object of faith. And the object of faith is Christ. That's why it tells us that they that know their God shall be strong and do great exploits when you know your God. There's a scripture that we read, I believe it's, I believe it's 1 John, it, it, it talks about that we have confidence that when we pray, he hears us, and we know. Let's go to that scripture. That if he hears us, we know we have petition of whatever we ask of him. So there is a knowledge. 1 John, I believe it was 2 John. There is a knowledge that, you, that God hears you and that you just know that God does not fail. How many of you know that God loves you? How many of you know that God would never let you down? So your faith is limited to your knowledge. And this is the scripture, 1 John chapter 5, verse 15. Maybe let's see let what verse 14 says. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. I mean, if you know it's God's will for you to walk in divine health. Do you really believe that? All right, because you have to believe it. Verse 15. And if we know, that is the knowledge part of this. And if you know that he's your healer, and if you know he's your provider, and if you know he's your sustainer, God is the only substance 
or rather the only sustainer that sustains the substance. God is the sustainer that sustains the substance. So if we know that he hears us, what's that we ask? We know that we have petitions that we desire of him. Say, I know. I know whose I am. In the name of Jesus, I have confidence in knowing that God is on my side. In the name of Jesus. How many of you know that God is on your side? Let me give you a scripture as far as that goes. Psalm 91 read verse 9. Let's go to NIV read verse 9 in NIV the other day. <coughs> Psalm 91 verse 9. And if you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling if you say you cannot say what you don't know. You cannot confess what you don't believe. So you know, you believe that God is on your side and you make the most high your dwelling place. Now verse 10 in King James says, There shall no evil before you. Neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. Do you really believe that? Or you think that is just somebody was somebody felt like writing some good stuff? See, this is the word of God. You're either gonna believe it all the time, or don't believe it at all. So we cannot say we believe this when everything is looking good, and when we hear of plague everywhere. Oh, wait a minute. He said it, but I'm not sure. If he's willing to do it. I said this morning, doing the nugget, I said people have no problem that God can. They just have issue that God will. They know God can. They know God can. God can do everything. But they are not sure if God will. Because they don't know him. They don't know his character. It is in God's character to keep you healthy. So you got to believe what he says, that no evil will be for you. And that no plague will come near your dwelling. So you have to have this knowledge. Now this knowledge enhances your faith. So if you don't know, you got to now search the scripture. So you can know something that pertains to your divine health in the scripture. You just have to know this. Because when you know, of course, then you will grow. And when you grow, you glow. So your knowledge is important to you to shine in life. You got to know. So your faith is limited to knowledge. The Bible says get understanding, get knowledge of God's word. Don't take off your belief as a Christian. And suddenly, you start acting like you don't believe God's word. But I thank God that you believe the word of God. Amen? Now look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm glad you are a believer. Say the next one the same thing. I can hear you say it again. Yes, yes. Now put your hands together for Jesus together. Or the second component of faith is conviction. Conviction. True faith needs personal conviction. You have to be convinced. Conviction. Conviction with a V. You have to be convinced. That you just know, that you just know that God will do what he says he will do. Amen. 
Because if you say you have faith and you are not convinced with what God says and something comes around you, you start getting scared. I know I traveled recently to my brother was with me. I think he saw some things firsthand. Sometimes when you travel with me, there are some things that you get to see. I would demonstrate this thing. You know, you just so he's, he, he saw that. He traveled to Kenya and to Uganda, especially in both places. And in Kenya, my goodness, I have to preach. They slaughtered me to preach many times a day, not once, not twice. I mean, constantly preaching and ministering. And I have every excuse to tell the pastor, you know what, pastor? There's jet lag. I'm not feeling the greatest right now. And really, I wasn't feeling the greatest. I was tired. I felt like my head was going to explode. I've not slept. Then to make matter worse, I was coughing. How many of you know it's not fun to be coughing? Or you have to preach. And people are lined up for me. As I was preaching, Boroga was watching this. I, I said, you know what? Whether there is cough or no cough, that devil of cough must stop. Amen. <laughs> oh, my, 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 my. Oh, my. You got to see how this is work. I was tired. But I got to minister. And people are lined up, pastors and bishops and apostles. Yes, they were all lined up for prayer. And, and here am I. Have every excuse not to minister. But I was convinced. I have a conviction in my spirit that what I feel does not determine what I am called to do. If everything feels go to bed, just sleep all day. I don't know if you know, it would have been nice to just sleep all day. Just this jet lag. You have a skills. Just tell them, no, Pastor, I want to rest for two nights. We, for we arrived on one day, I believe the next day we're supposed to go and start preaching. So, oh my. And we have to leave early in the morning. So there was not enough time to even sleep. But I have to preach. And I have to minister. And you know, when you are in the ministry like this of the supernatural, you know, you have to yield yourself and you cannot think about yourself. But when you think about yourself, you miss out on what God can use you to do. Amen? You got to forget about yourself and just submit yourself to God and just have your conviction that God is there to protect you and to shield you in the name of Jesus. Man, there was this day I was ministering and this, of course, I was also tired. So I, I believe I was fasting some of those times. And, uh, and as I was praying for people, one lady, maybe you saw it on video, just came and grabbed me. She almost knocked. She almost knocked me down. She ended up messing up my, 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 my buttons. I was trying to get away from her. She felt she got to receive something. She felt she got to grab the apostle. If she only knows that any little push, I'm on the floor. <laughs> I was tired. I want to just minister, please don't touch me because I was tired. They don't get that. But I have every excuse to say, you know what? I'm going to just pray for you out there, please. I'm going to stay on the altar and just make altar call in the name of Jesus. Everybody be blessed. Just believe by faith you got it where you are. Don't touch me because there's coronavirus. You know, what oh, we are coming, they actually have to take temperature everywhere, all the way from, from, uh, from the airport. They have to take your temperature. I said, my God, this temperature better change this number. But I got to go into that country. And the thing was reading. And I saw the thing went up and then it went normal. So I was asked to go in. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm sharing this to let you know that 
when you have conviction, you are moved by the conviction you have in the word of God, you become unstoppable. You become unstoppable. And if you've been through some of us, some of us have been through in life already. You are willing to go all the way for Jesus. Because this is not a time to back out or to, to be afraid. You have to have knowledge, of course, of God's word. You have to have conviction in your spirit. You have to be convinced that what God says in his word is true. I'm convinced. I have conviction in my spirit that I live in Goshen. Uh, Genesis, chapter, Exodus chapter 8, NIV, I believe verse 22. Exodus 8, 22. Let's see if that's the scripture. All right. But on, go to verse 21. If you don't let my people go, I will send swarms of flies unto you and your officials and all your people in so the house of the Egyptians will be full of flies. Even the ground will be covered with them. Look at verse 22. But on that day, I will deal differently with the land of Goshen. Where my people live, no swarms of flies will be there. So that you will know that I, the Lord, I am in this land. When you read stuff like that, and you have the conviction in your spirit that what that says is true, pertaining to you that you live in Goshen, and that God has determined to protect all those who are in his house, you have a full assurance. Because now you know, and then you are convinced, and the thought element or the third component of faith is action. So you act on what you know and what you are convicted of, have conviction of, then you act on it. Because faith without action is what? Dead. You got to act on what you believe. So you cannot tell me I believe no disease will touch me and yet you tell me, go hide because disease might touch you. Do you get it? Let me say it again. Let me say it again. I know they, they, they say I'm crazy, but they've seen nothing yet. Amen? Amen? I love it when the Bible says that, the Bible talks about the apostles. It says, Here comes those men again. These are the men that turned our city upside down. Here they come. That should be said of every Christian. Every Christian, that the world would know that men, these Christians, you don't mess with them. They have an unusual power they carry. That they have the power of the Holy Spirit on the inside of them. And that no disease can touch them. Oh, but that pastor died. Maybe they don't even believe. Maybe they were just going because they, they have to be in church. Do you know that? Some are just trying to go there because they have to, not because they have the confidence in the God they serve. Say with me, I would live and not die. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that I am safe. No disease touches my body. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you believe it, say amen. He said, if the spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, that same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken, reinvigorate, energize your mortal bodies. Romans, I believe, 8, 11, or 11, Romans. If the same spirit 
that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you. 811. I mean, how many of you believe the Spirit dwells in you? I mean, how many of you know the Holy Ghost dwells in you? I told somebody, maybe I've been telling you all this all, all, all along about God's presence. This time, like never before, is the time to have the consciousness of continual release of God's presence around you everywhere you go. But are you going to warm and just release you? In fact, there is an electromagnetic field around you. As you are walking around, there is a release of energy from the inside. The energy of God is messing up any other thing that is contrary to the Spirit of God. As you are walking around, there is a release from the inside of you. The Spirit of God is releasing some power. And it begins to diffuse any sickness, any bacteria, any virus, any fungus, any microorganism is diffused by the presence of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And it tells us, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. First John 4 verse 4. Greater is he that is in you. And Romans 8 verse 11. We'll go back there again. So if the spirit that raised up Jesus from the death, dead, dwell in you. How many of you believe the spirit dwells in you? Say, so I believe the spirit of God dwells in me. Karabala. In the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, this time you got to really walk by faith. Because there are people who have been distancing themselves and they are still sick. You got to walk by faith. There are those who don't go anywhere, they are still sick. You got to believe God. This is a time to walk by faith. This is a time the Bible says, and the just shall live by faith. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken shall reinvigorate, shall energize your mortal bodies by his spirit. Kalingoro Bodaya. By his spirit that dwells in you. So the first element or the first component of faith is knowledge. So you got to get that knowledge like you've been getting and two, you have to have conviction. You have to have conviction. You got to know this thing. You have to be convinced in your heart. You have to just, I don't know, the, I don't know if, if they use this term here. You have to cross your heart. You use this term here, cross your heart. What, what, what does it mean to cross your heart? What does it mean? Is that superstitious? Say, please don't cross your heart. We don't want, we don't go there. That word, that word, what I'm trying to say, you have to believe with your heart. Your heart is made up. That's what that's supposed to mean. And the devil tried to use those words to make you not do that. But it means your heart is made up. Your mind is made up. You are completely sold out. That's what, it, that's what it's supposed to mean. But the devil will use some of these phrases to make you not use it because it belongs to the devil. But really, it means to make up your mind. Your mind is made up. You are so convinced in your spirit that what God says, he will do it. You have to have the conviction. And number three, you have to act action. Three is action. You have to act on what you believe. You have to act on what you are convinced of. Because if you don't act, that means you really don't believe. If all I've been telling you all these years is that God is a great healer, you walk in divine health, and now suddenly, apostle is hiding. That means he never really believed. He was just talking. Say, I believe. In the name of Jesus. Say, I believe. I am untouchable. 
I believe God's word. No enemy can touch me. I'm above sickness. I'm above disease. I walk in divine health. I believe it. In the name of Jesus. I believe it. It's working for me. In the name of Jesus. Are you blessed tonight? Put your hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us rise up. The Bible tells us Hebrews 11 verse maybe we can start from verse 1 then we're going to start with Holy Communion in a moment. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Verse 2 for by it the elders obtained a good report. You're obtaining a good report. Verse 3. Through faith we understand the words, that the words, which is the aeons, we are framed by the word of God. That the things which are seen, we are not made of the things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts and by it he being dead. He being dead, yet still speaking. For by faith Enoch Enoch was translated that he should not see death and he was not found because God had translated him. And for before his translation, he had a witness that he pleased God. If I God please, I say I am a God pleaser. He said it he have a testimony that Enoch pleased God. He was translated. He never saw death. He had a witness that he pleased God. Now how do you please God? Verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For they that come to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Take your time to read the rest of the scripture. The rest of this particular chapter. By faith. Can only please him by faith. We're about to take our only communion in a moment. And we believe God that as we partake of the communion tonight, we are receiving our heavenly immunity. Against any ideas of the enemy. The Bible said here that disciples have met daily or they met and part of the things they did besides hearing the word of God studying God's word was that they were breaking bread Acts 2.42 and also in prayer we are about to partake of this communion in a moment and let me tell you this everything in God's kingdom done as an act of faith. It's not by power, it's by spirit, but you have to believe God. What you're going to do, like we've done in the last couple of services, except on Sundays, is I'm going to have the elements in my hand. Those of you on this side, you get from my left hand. Those on the right, you get quickly, and then you're going to go back to your seat. Then we're going to officiate the Holy Communion. And we're going to believe God's word. That God's word is always true. He never fails in the name of Jesus. Amen. Just come out. As ushers are guiding you, just come out quickly and let's do this very in a very speedy fashion, please.
1 Corinthians 11, we've read this so many times, but it's a very powerful scripture. 1 Corinthians 11, I believe. Verse 29. And he, for those who eat and drink of the cup, unworthily eat it and drink it damnation to himself not discerning the lost body verse 30 but if verse 30 that is why many among you are weak and sick a number of you are falling asleep because this is done unworthily. Now let us really read the scripture. I don't know if many of you have read all the passage, but maybe I should do this today so you kind of understand what it means to do this unworthily so you know what it is. Verse 31. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, and we should not be condemned with the word. Therefore, wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to partake of the Holy Communion, wait for one another. If any man be hungry, let him eat at home. So that when you come together, that ye, not, that ye come not together with condemnation. So what was happening with this Corinthian church? Maybe we should go to the NIV. Corinthian Church is they come for Holy Communion service like this. And of course, it's not just this little element. That means actually a piece of bread and, and a cup. And everybody's rushing to get it. I don't know if you remember the, the first time that the element was not enough for everybody. People are rushing in to grab it. And Paul said, when you do that, you are not discerning the body correctly. You don't understand what is happening. So, to eat of the bread of the wine unworthily is basically to not to respect one another. It's, and that is why many of you in, the, in verse 30, that's why many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. But what we are doing is that we are partaking of the Holy Communion worthily. And because we are, many are going to be strong. And I decree you will remain strong. And you will remain healthy. And you will be alive in the name of Jesus. Let's get the element of, of the body of Christ. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this special time. You directed us as a body to do this every time we gather for this season. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. As your people partake of this, we believe it's an immunity for us against any agency of the enemy. Lord, you said by the stripes of Jesus you were healed as we partake of the body of Christ. Let the healing that Jesus has purchased for us manifest in our lives. Let none of us, none among us ever experience any weakness, ever experience any sickness, never experience any death in the name of Jesus. Lord, let the benefit of this Holy Communion manifest in our lives. In Jesus' name, and every believer says, Amen. Let's partake of the Lord together. In the same manner, he took the cup, and after he had supped, he said, This cup, this is the cup, the New Testament in my blood. We understand that the blood is the highest currency 
in the realm of the spirit. Lord, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the efficacy in that blood, the power in the blood. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, we partake of this blood right now. Dear precious Holy Spirit, we trust you. I pray for every member of this house, those who are watching online, those who are partaking with us online of this communion, Lord. Lord, I pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they join us that are here, partaking of this communion, the same benefit, the same blessing be released unto their lives by faith in the name of Jesus. Let us, by your special grace, continue to walk in divine health. Lord, we thank you for the blood of Jesus. We believe by faith as we take it now. We walk in divine health in the name of Jesus. No evil, no sickness touches our body. We are completely exonerated. We are completely immune against any of the diseases that is in the world. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. And everyone that believes says amen. Let's partake of the blood together. If you believe you are protected, divinely protected, I mean divinely protected by the blood of Jesus. If you believe, let me hear another loud amen. amen. Glory be to God. All right, uh, we are going to give unto the Lord tonight of our of our offerings and tithe, and uh, lift up your offering wherever you are. Please, could you help me with that? Yes, please. Brother Wright. If you are watching online, you have uh, you can do this online as well. As you give unto the Lord, you experience the blessing that will be released upon this house by the power of the Holy Spirit. This time you will never lack or beg for bread. Where others are wondering where the money is going to come from, you always have. Somehow, your needs are met in the name of Jesus. Lift up your offering. I thank you, Lord, for everyone giving tonight. I thank you, Lord, for the offerings. I thank you, Lord, for the seeds and for the tithe. But I speak a special blessing on every giver and upon every offering or tithe. Lord, you said they should bring it to your storehouse. But as they do, Lord, you said in your word you would rebuke the devourer for our sake. Our finances is completely secured. In the days where people are afraid of money, we shall not be afraid of money. Because our needs are met. Lord, we thank you and we give you praise tonight. In Jesus' name, and every believer says, Amen. Amen. As the song is played, Jesus is the center. That I see. There is power in your name. Miracles happen in your name. As we lift our voice in praise. It's you that I see, it's you that I see. Sing it out. At the center of it all. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. Jesus only. It's you that I see. Uh, Live the sins wherever you are. At the center. At the center of it all. 
It's you that I see. Only you, Jesus. It's you that I see. There is power. There is power. Miracles happen. Miracles happen. I still lift our voice. I still lift our voice. It's you that I see. Thank you, Jesus. It's you that I see. One more time, sing with us. Sing. I'm the center. I'm the center of it all. It's you that I see. Jesus. It's you that I see. Nobody else is worthy. I'm the center of it all. I'm the center of it all. Only you. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. Lift those hands wherever you are, declare it. There is power. There is power in your name. You are the seven. You are the seven. You are the seven. As we lift our voice. As we lift our voice and pray. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. One more time, Lord. There is power in the name. Miracles happen. Miracles happen in the name. As we lift our voices. As we lift our voices. It's you that I see. It's you that I see. You are bigger. Bigger than the biggest. You are stronger. Stronger than the strongest, you are higher, higher than the highest. You are greater, greater than the greatest. You are bigger, bigger than the biggest. You are stronger, stronger than the strongest. You are higher, higher than the highest. You are greater, greater than the greatest. You are bigger, you are bigger, bigger than the biggest. You are stronger. Precious Holy Spirit, we give you praise, Lord Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. We magnify you. You know the end from the beginning. We are so grateful because you know everything. We are glad where, you, where we are today. We are not here by accident. Lord, we are grateful. As to go home, lead us home safely and bring us back again as we have a power encounter on Friday. But I pray we we'll energize everybody continuously wherever they are. That Lord, this, the word they've received will continue to just resonate in their spirit. That they will speak your word. They will continue to have the knowledge of your word and be convinced in your heart and act on your word. Help us, Lord, to put these three elements in, in work in our lives. Lead us home safely, bring us back here again, and all together your name be glorified. 
in Jesus' name. And everyone that believes says, Amen. 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 God bless you. We'll see you back on Friday. Invite others to come and join us. Let's pack this place up and put the devil to shame. Amen. Amen. And we, are, we know we are walking in divine health, walking in victory. Amen. Amen. If you have not bought